close our eyes when we meditate because we're going to see clearly what's going on inside. But that doesn't mean we close our eyes all the time. Just live in the monastery, you want to look around, see what needs to be done. Everything here is volunteer. Volunteer work. In some cases there's assignments, in a lot of cases just look around and see what needs to be cleaned, what needs to be straightened out, who needs to be helped. And this way we help one another in the practice. We don't practice silence here. We're trying to practice right speech. One of the first rules of right speech is if it's not necessary, you don't have to say it. You don't want to break other people's silence for idle chatter. And this teaches you to be very careful about what you say, where you say it, to whom you say it. And that lesson carries over into the mind. If we just go around being silent all the time, we don't really get a chance to practice right speech. You're very quiet, quiet, quiet outside, but you're, you've got all the old conversations going on inside. Whereas if you learn to be a little bit more discriminating in your speech outside, you can be more discriminating in your speech inside. The voices that come up in the mind, you have to be very careful about them. Because in one way or another, they're all your voices. You've taken them in. And now you've got the opportunity to sort them out. Which ones do you want to keep in, and which ones do you want to push outside the walls? It's a sorting out process, because there is skillful, skillful speech and unskillful speech, both on the outer level and on the inner level. And the skillful speech is actually useful, like the skillful speech inside that reminds you to get back to the breath, that asks good questions about the mind and asks good questions about the breath. You don't want to just turn out all thinking altogether. You want to learn a time and a place for your thinking. And that's the Buddha said, with right speech you want to say things that are true and beneficial and timely. And the same rule should apply to your inner speech as well. If something comes up, is it really true? Well, if you don't know, well, you can put it aside. Is it beneficial? There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the mind that's not beneficial at all. You put that aside. And then if it's true and beneficial, is this the right time and place for that? Once you sort out your inner speech inside, it actually becomes an integral part of your meditation. Directing the mind here, directing it there. Changing this, changing that, adjusting things, and then when things are just right, it's like, I stay right here. So watch out both for your internal and your external speech. Look out for what needs to be sorted out outside, what needs to be sorted out inside. That way the practice becomes all around. <laughs>